channel. This will be the first video that I've done on the Micah Stauffer and the Huxley situation. I've done a little bit of a deep dive into it over the past few days, and I wanted to give a timeline of events surrounding this situation. Now, as you guys know, Micah Stauffer and her husband James adopted little Huxley three years ago from China. They basically showcase this whole adoption process uh, once he was here they done videos of him and put it all over youtube where they ended up amassing a fortune from these videos micah ended up having over like 700,000 subscribers but after she announced the rehoming of little huxley she lost a lot of her support a lot of her subs however it is said that allegedly she is buying followers back to make it look like she's not lost a ton of her subscribers however that's neither here nor there but she made a business out of being a mommy vlogger and she made a lot of money from it i did read and i saw this in a few other youtube videos that they actually done a fundraiser to even be able to afford the adoption of little huxley i'm also understanding that there is a welfare investigation going on and throughout this investigation they are learning that Micah didn't go through an adoption agency to rehome him, but it seems like she may have placed him with someone that she knew, not that she didn't really go through like an, an agency, that he is just, I guess, maybe with a friend of hers or someone that she met through doctors or something to that effect. But however, from what I'm understanding throughout this investigation, they are saying that it doesn't look like she went through an agency to rehome Little Huxley. So I wanted to give a timeline of events based off my research and other articles out there. It seems like on February 16, 2020, which is my birthday, Micah put out a now deleted Instagram post. The post says the last couple days have been hard. I don't want to sugarcoat anything. We have had a lot of meltdowns and lots of behaviors that have had us on our knees begging God for guidance. On social media and on YouTube, we rarely show the behaviors or the hard stuff because we try our best to respect our son's privacy and dignity. We've had hard days, lots of them. I wish autism and adoption trauma had a manual to direct you through it all. Hashtag autism, hashtag mom struggles, hashtag every day is a new day. Now, after that point, Instagram posts of Huxley's came to a stop and people started noticing. They started asking what was going on. The person behind the actual fan page reached out to Mika herself and asked what's going on and she was immediately blocked. Now imagine that, you're blocking the person that is behind your fan page. You would think if there's nothing to it, there would be no reason to block that person, but maybe just explain, you know, we're going through some tough times right now. Or there's a lot going on, um, something, but to block them is a little extreme. And it makes me kind of wonder is if it was because she knew that there was something going on that was not, it wasn't good. It wasn't, it wasn't something in Huxley's best interest. Because if they really feel like was a, this was in Huxley's best interest, it seems like they wouldn't have a problem you know, stating that or they wouldn't feel the need to block someone just for asking. So on May 26th is when they finally break their silence on YouTube and they put out a video titled An Update on Our Family. Now in the video, they explain they couldn't handle Huxley's needs. Once Huxley came home, there was a lot more special needs that we weren't aware of and that we were not told. They say that the adoption agency was not transparent with them. For us, it's been really hard hearing from the medical professionals a lot of their feedback and things that have been upsetting. We've never wanted to be in this position. We've been trying to get his needs met and help him out as much as possible. We truly love him. That's what they stated on their video. They added that they made the decision to rehome Huxley and that it was after multiple assessments and evaluations from different doctors, numerous medical professionals. Now, obviously at this point, tons of comments are popping up on their video. What is going on? I mean, the term rehome is not used for children not that I'm aware of anyways, it's more used for dogs, you know, puppies, animals. You rehome your puppy. It's not you rehome your child. You put your child up for adoption. You adopt a child. You you foster kids. But to use the term, we rehomed Huxley, that just kind of, I don't know, it just doesn't sound right. So, people become concerned. A lot of questions were asking them about his welfare. How was he doing? And they didn't want to elaborate on anything. They basically said it was due to privacy concerns, um, which you have to just kind of shake your head at that because so much of Little Huxley's life and their life has been on camera. We've seen it on YouTube and now they're saying, we don't want to answer any questions. We don't want to talk about it anymore. We want to respect our privacy and his privacy. 
Now on May 28th, 2020, after a lot of backlash from former fans and former followers, their lawyer releases a statement to people. Um, and it basically just says the same thing that the couple said in their video. It says, we are privy to this case and given the facts at hand, we feel this was the best decision for Huxley. And coming to know our clients, we know they are a loving family and are very caring parents that would do anything for their children. Since his adoption, they consulted with multiple professionals in the healthcare and educational arenas in order to provide Huxley with the best possible treatment and care. Over time, the team of medical professionals advised our clients it might be best for Huxley to be placed with another family. I've never in my life heard doctors or medical professionals tell you to rehome your child. That's not their place, to be quite honest. It's not their place. They, uh, medical professionals, it's up to them to give you the education and the knowledge and even the equipment to help you take care of your child. It's not their place to tell you, oh, well, you don't have the equipment, you don't have the education, you don't have the knowledge, so you need to give them somebody that does. I've never in my life heard of that. Now, BuzzFeed News reports that per the Stauffer's lawyers, Huxley was not placed in the foster care system and that Micah and James decided to hand-select a family who was equipped to handle Huxley's needs. Now, a petition was started at a change.org to demand the Stauffer's remove all monetized content featuring Huxley from their YouTube channel. The petition reads as follows. The recent rehoming of Huxley Stopper has been heartbreaking. These people need to stop exploiting and profiting off of Huxley immediately. Their YouTube channel skyrocketed thanks to Huxley. He has done enough for the Stoppers. He brought them a McMansion, multiple vacations a year. What did he get in exchange? He got rehomed as if he was a freaking puppy. Before anyone comes at me, riddle me this. If any of the Stoppers' bio kids developed any mental disorders later on in life, are they just going to rehome them too? Hell no. Huxley was expendable to these vile human beings. He no longer fits into their aesthetics, so bye-bye. The internet has your back, Huxley. We hope you're happy and thriving wherever you are. And this is crazy because over 45,000 people has signed this petition. Now, on May 30th, all of these brands that used to work with Micah started dropping her. So they started ending their partnership with her. Playtex Baby, Chili's, Big Lots, all decided to end their partnership with Micah Stauffer. A lot of people started calling those brands out on social media, asking them, we would like to know if you're still working with her. If you are, I'm not going to be purchasing, for, purchasing from your company any longer. I don't want to support someone that supports child neglect or child abandonment. And some of these companies responded saying, we're no longer working with this individual. E! News spoke to a representative of Delaware's County Sheriff's Office who says the department had received several calls regarding the welfare of Little Huxley. They did say that he has not missed it. They said that there is a welfare investigation that has been open. The office's representative put out the following statement after getting tons of calls about the situation. They said, our primary concern is for the well-being of the child as well as the other children in the household. Our investigation is ongoing and will include contact with all children to ensure their safety. All adoption cases are confidential and must go through a thorough process with specific requirements and safeguards. In private adoptions, there are the same legal requirements that must be ad adhered to. These include home studies as well as background checks on adopting parents. In this case, we are confident that the appropriate process is occurring. Now, after that, BuzzFeed reaches out to um, the adoption agency that the Stoffers use and the vice president for policy and external affairs, Susan Cox, says that she cannot comment on whether the WACAP was involved in the Stoffers adoption, but she does say that the situation uh, is highly unusual of what's going on. So the vice president had this to say about the situation, putting it on social media and describing it as we found another family. Well, what does that mean? Did they go through an agency? Was there another home study done on the other family? That part is highly unusual. Now, after people started demanding that they delete all of the videos that they were making money on that featured little Huxley, Mika actually deleted all of the videos. Well, the majority of the videos on her account. It seems like she deleted most of the videos. She also deleted a lot of Instagram pictures of Huxley. It almost 
famously like deleting him from their life. Like it never happened. Which makes you wonder, is she only doing this because people were calling for her to do it? Were they saying stop making money off him? Y'all don't have him anymore. So therefore you are not allowed to post pictures of him. Do not post videos of him. Because let me tell you guys, they were, I'm gonna look up their social blade and I can tell you they were probably making tons of money. So I just hopped over to their social blade, which I should have done this before I even got on the video when I was doing like my research for everything. But I just hopped on their social blade, you guys, and this is wild. Okay, so they were making a ton of money before this incident occurred and before they decided to rehome their adoptive son, Huxley. But now it shows them a estimated monthly earnings of nothing. It also shows them estimated yearly earnings of nothing. It says their subscriber account for the last 30 days is down 16,000 subscribers. So they have lost 16,000 subscribers in the last 30 days. Probably more than likely the reason why it's showing that they are not making any money at all is due to all of the videos that has been deleted um, because that will take away obviously from how much money you're making. So I know it was said that I read reports that they made a ton of money off these videos. And before this happened, it was a growing channel. They had a lot of support, a lot of subscribers. And since this has happened, it's showing that they have lost 16,000 subscribers. But we do know that it was alleged that she was buying subscribers as well. So did she lose maybe 25,000 subscribers? Is she bought and paid for some? So it only looks like they lost 16,000 subscribers. I don't know, we don't know. But Social Blade is showing that they are not looking to earn the money that they used to earn because they had to delete all of those videos. So you guys, that's what's going on. Like I said, there is a welfare investigation. The vice president for the adoption agency said, this is highly unlikely, highly unusual. She doesn't know what's going on but hopefully we'll figure it out wherever little Huxley is. I hope they are able to locate him. And if it is just a family that they handpicked, I don't know if that's acceptable. What do you guys think? Is it okay for them to just to say, we don't want to take care of him because this and this and this and this, but we're going to, we pick you, you guys can do it. Are they equipped to make that decision? Are they qualified to make that decision? on who can take care of him, considering they can't. You know, like I said earlier, medical professionals, I've never heard them say, well, your kid has XYZ and you never had to take care of a kid with XYZ before, so let's give him to a parent that has. No, that's not what they do. They educate you, they give you the knowledge that you need to take care of a child with XYZ, and they give you the medical equipment that you're gonna need to take care of that child. I've never in my life heard of them say, we're just gonna, you don't need to take care of the child, give them to somebody who can. And then hearing that it's more than likely they chose the couple that they gave him to, someone that's not qualified, like an adoption agency where they do house visits and they do background checks on the people that's taking Little Huxley in. Um, it's really mind blowing, you guys. Um, being the mother of a son with autism, it is hard, but I could never in a million years imagine just sticking my child somewhere else because it was too hard for me. What do you guys think? This is a this is a huge deal because with everything else going on, this has gotten a ton of attention. So I just wanted to touch bases on it a little bit and give a little bit of a timeline from the things that I could gather. What do you guys think about it? Leave it in the comment section below. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Goodbye, everyone.